Hello students, I hope everybody is fine, going great with your health and your study material. So today we will take up the chapter called Control and Coordination and this chapter will be under 3-4 tutorials. So in today's tutorial, we are going to study about, as you can see the name on the heading top, Control and Coordination, okay. so. What does this term mean, control and coordination? So in case of coordination, the working together of the various system, okay, working together of various system of or system in the body, okay, in the body. The body is stand for both, that is plants also and animals also. So working together with the various systems in the body is called coordination. Now let us see the definition and the subsequent topic under the heading called control and coordination. So I hope everybody should be sitting with textbook, notes, copies and pencil and pen. So please put them together and write down this definition as we are reading tutorial. Okay. So control and coordination as I have told you, uh, in case of us that is human beings, takes place through nervous system and hormonal system, okay, which is a part of endocrine system. And when we respond to a respective scenario or the stimulus, now here we use the word stimulus and the instructions are sent to the nervous system by, underline this particular letter here, effector. So effector, E double F, E C T O R, we are going to use this term. And other is effector, okay, A double F. So the effector will collect the information and the effector will respond to that information from the nervous system to take the action. So effector and effector, though the terms looks like alike, but they have different functions. Now in detail let us see what is the meaning of the term control and coordination so underline this definition it means the systematic manner in which our body works okay so in this in our body it is a complex mechanism and the process of this control coordination in our body is very complicated but still it works very efficiently and it works efficient efficiently because the system is interconnected. So whatever we have done in chapter 1 called life process, you have seen the, how we consume the food and how the stomach digests it and how the intestine absorb it. So it is all the process that takes place the result of control and coordination in our system. And as I have told you, this control and coordination in our body is managed by nervous system and hormonal system. So underline these two terms, so control and coordination in the body is managed by both nervous system, write it down, nervous system and hormonal system because they will play a massive role in this control coordination. So before we move further, so let us have some view of the nervous system. So as we have known about it, the nervous system works with the help of various functional unit in the cell called neurons, okay. So neurons are the unit for nervous system and this is the diagram in your book. So please draw them and label them side by side, okay. So in case of labeling, you know this part, the whole part called the cell body. So write down this cell body as cyton, okay, C-Y-T-O-N and this yellowish long part is called exon or exon, A-X-O-N. So what cell body is cyton, the long tail is exon or exon is pronounced it. So in case of cyton, you can see a thread-like structure at the top called dendrites. So dendrites, D-R-I-T-E, okay, dendrites. So where the dendrites are the hair-like structure, so at the base from where they arise, you can see that they are more thickened part. 
So we call them as dendron, okay, dendron. So from dendron part, the dendrites further break up into tiny or the thin hair-like structures. So write down both the name dendrites and dendron. Then you can have the, you can see the nucleus here. And by the side of the nucleus, just put the dots on the side, circling the nucleus called, write down the name, Nissels granule, N-I-S-S-I-L, apostrophe S, Nissels granule. So write them properly in your notes copy, okay? So granules, G-R-A-N, and double U-L-E, granules. Nissels granules they are called as. Then when we go into the exon system, so you can see they have a covering called myelin. So M-Y-E-L-I-N, myelin sheath we call it. S-H-E-A-T-H, -H, myelin sheath. That is the whole covering. And then they have got these you can see one by one. These are referred as scavan cell, okay? SCH, you have heard this word last year, SCHWAAN, okay, Scavan cell. And in each Scavan cell, you can find a dot like structure. So these dot like structure are called Scavan's nucleus. Just write down this word, Scavan nucleus. So labeling is very important for examination point of view. Make sure of it. And thereafter, you can see in each cell, there is some gap between them. So we call them as nodes of Ranvier. N-O-D, node of Ranvier. R-A-N-V-I-E-R, okay, V-I-E-R. Node of Ranvier. And then, of course, a terminal end called exon terminal. So just... Label this diagram very carefully because it's part of your textbook. So this neuron basically structure consists of three parts as I've told you. One is exon, other is dendrites, the hair-like growth and the cell body called cyton. So these things should be known to you and to understand them further. Okay, so these structures of this neuron has got, as I've told you, cell body called cyton, and then they have a growth called dendrites, and they ex exon the long run for the neuron. But here's a new word coming to you that these exon, the whole neuron, that is, whole neuron is made up of another word, neural lemma, N E U, neural lemma, okay? Sometimes they are asking, they do ask you in this question is statement that neuron is made up of what? So neural lemma and the function of dendrites as I have told you it is to receive impulse. Okay, impulse is the response according to our respective performance and control coordination and then they are delivered to another neuron at a junction called synapses. Okay, so write down a new word here synapses where the impulses are transferred from one neuron to another. So for that we have number of types of neurons or nerves. So number one is sensory neuron or sensory nerve which carries the impulse to the brain. Okay, So it carries the impulse from the sense organ to the brain. Second is motor neuron so it brings back the message from the brain to the organ. And then we have the relay neuron, okay. So it acts as both the function carries also and brings the information back to the effector organs also. So write down all the three types, sensory, motor and relay neuron, okay. Now let us see the various parts of it. So before we further move, so you should know the in our central nervous system that consists of our brain and the spinal cord, okay? So though we take this topic separately also, but for the timing, just know that some part of the CNS or the central nervous system. And this 
nervous system has got further other parts. One is called PNS, the other part of the nervous system. First one was CNS, central nervous system. Second is peripheral nervous system, okay. Peripheral nervous system. The first part for nervous system was central nervous system, then peripheral nervous system. Then further this peripheral nervous system has number of other parts. So we will th do them in detail when we deal with it. But the time being, you should know some term called autonomic nervous system and voluntary nervous system. So these all system we will do deal when we study about brain. So but this term should be in your mind when we uh, doing this chapter control coordination. So since this control coordination, we have one topic in your textbook called reflex action. So as we know this topic normally always come examination of what is reflex action. So write it down. So these are the quick, spontaneous and autonomic response and performed by the specialized cells sensitive to different stimuli. Okay. Again, underline the whole definition. It is a quick, spontaneous and autonomic response. And the receptors in the body are there, which are specialized cells, which are sensitive to different type of responses that the body receive. For that, we have some of the examples here. So for pain, we have the non-receptors. So this term is not meant for your cluster, but you can only say that pain received. Similarly, pressure then temperature. So these are some of the stimuli received by the receptors in our body system. Then this how the mechanism takes place. So you just take out the book also and check it out. So you can see in case of say we have taken example of heat called thermo. So this uh, the thermo receptor of our hand get activated whenever there is a rise in temperature and generate an impulse to the central nervous system through the nerves. Then the central nervous system then check out that what the body is getting into it and what the problem is there. So it responds and that response is carried to the effector organ through the motor nerve and then the response is that to withdraw the hand. So we withdraw our hand from the heat sensation zone where we have received the heat. So it is just a simple systematized format where you have just seen that how the reflex action is performed. So we have just told you in that case that as we receive the thermo reception, the impulse goes to central nervous system, it receives the data and send the information through effector that is the uh, motor neuron to the effector organ okay and in this case say if a effector organ is hand, so you withdraw the hand from that side. Now in terms of complete stuff, so reflex action followed a path and that path followed by reflex action is called reflex arc, okay, where the signal runs through it. So write down the whole pathway for that. First one, the receptor that is the skin or the surface of the body receiving the stimulus, then sensory neuron take that sensation through the relay neuron and here the spinal cord because you know this, this decision is taken at the end of spinal cord basically and here the response is received and the spinal cord take a decision send the message through motor neuron to the effector organ say in this case we have muscles here and these muscles thereafter withdraw and hence we get the action meditated in complete sense. So you can see the diagram here for the same structure which is being discussed to you just now. So here is the site which is and our hand is nearby that heat sensation zone. The sensory neuron or the receptor organ called skin receives the sensation and this stimuli is then passed on to sensory neuron which carries out to the spinal cord of the CNS. Okay. And from here the <laughs> response is generated through the relay neuron, then that information is carried further by the motor neuron to the effector organ. In this case, we have the forearm or the arm of the muscles of the arm and we then withdraw the hand from the site of heat zone. 
and this is basically action that is mediated within second. So you can see that how fast the system works in our body line. Okay, so as a result, so these things should be known to you. <clears throat> now, as we know, your body is completely having a lot of receptors through and through. So write it down one by one. First is called the phonoreceptor, okay, P-H-O-N-O, -O, phono receptor. This is present in your ear. And of course, if it is in the ear, the function is hearing and of course, balancing the body. So you can see the ear not only help you to hear, but also balance your body. Then is photoreceptor. Photo is light. So write down the second is called photoreceptor. And they are present in our eyes. And the function, of course, is responsible for the various visual stimulus. Then further, if you move into the receptor zone, we have in our body also called thermoreceptors, okay? And these thermoreceptors are present throughout your body on the surface, that is the skin surface, and they receive it and responsible for, online all the three terms, pain, touch, heat, okay? The skin receive all these stimulus in the form of either pain or touch and heat. And these are also referred as thermoreceptors, okay? Then comes the next topic for receiving setup called olfactoreceptor. Now these olfactoreceptors are present in the nose and the function of course is to receive the smell, okay? And then the other one that you have read in that system of digestion called gustatoreceptor, okay? So gustatoreceptors are present in your tongue and they help to detect the taste. So make sure you should be knowing all these type of receptors in your body line, right from the first one called the phonoreceptor, then the photoreceptor, thermoreceptor, olfactory receptor, and gustatoreceptor. So these are must for us, should be knowing it because we're using this term when you work the whole system. Then further, uh, these are some of the differences that should be knowing or known to you because we are going to use these differences as we proceed in the chapter. So endocrine gland and exocrine gland. So we already have read these names. So here they are the ductless gland. They won't have ducts in them. Endocrine, exocrine gland have ducts in them. So endocrine gland basically secrete hormones more or less while the exocrine gland secrete enzymes and then the endocrine gland itself, they secrete the secretion directly into the blood. They get the secretion stored in the ducts. And important for that is in case of endocrine glands, as you can see, they are situated away from the site of action. Okay. And in case of the exocrine gland, you can see they are near the site of the action. So these are common differences that should be known to you. Then this is the important one because we haven't gone into the detail, but still you should know about the difference between nervous system and hormonal system. So as the name states, the nervous system, the information is conveyed from the nerve or the nerve impulse here. So they are conveyed through chemical messengers, okay? The nerve impulse are connected through nerve fiber, just I have given you the diagram, while these are transported through the blood, the hormones transfer through the blood. That in case of the nervous system, the flow of information is too fast, very rapid, and they are quite slow. And its effect is very short-lived because they immediately act and the reaction is mediated out. Or here the effects are long for the duration of time. So these differences should be known to you. And thereafter, as I have told you, all the receptors which we have on our body line, so we just re-revise the whole stu structure. So in case of the ear, I have told you, we have phonoreceptor and at the junction of eyes, we have the photoreceptors, then the skin have got thermoreceptors. So please re-revise the whole stuff. The nose have got the olfactoreceptors and the tongue has got the gustatoreceptors. So basically these are the sites where the body receives the stimuli or 
the other things that the body react to the environment. Now this is the one that is the important part here because in your book we have this diagram the structure of neuromuscular junction okay. So write down the definition for that. So neuromuscular junction is a chemical synapse between the motor neuron underline the word skeleton muscle fiber underline both the word. So neuromuscular junction is a chemical synapsis between motor neuron and the skeleton muscle fiber and thereafter it con consists of various parts. So we will deal these parts as we stu study the structure in short duration of time. Now this is the diagram from your textbook so please check out the whole figure short and draw the label diagram for that. So here is the motor neuron coming from and these whole structure as you can see is referred as a muscles fiber okay where they get intacted on and these motor neuron have got these junctions here as you can see referred as the branches of motor neurons. So write it down branches of motor neuron and then in the muscle fiber we have the myofibrils. Myofibrils okay fibrils. So myofibrils. So uh, please see the diagram again and pause the video when you label the whole structure. And then this is the one the called neuromuscular <coughs> junction that diagram we should understand it and draw it properly okay. So this is the whole diagram that you should be knowing of the neuromuscular junction. So you just check the diagram properly again it is from your textbook also. So, so at the place where the please underline the word presynaptic terminal this is the one that enter into the coordination zone. So that is the first part of it. Then you can see it has the small circles or the pink like circle zone scattered throughout the yellow zone. It is called synaptic vesicle. Synaptic. So right on the synaptic okay. Synaptic vesicle. So write it down if you want to write synaptic though it is mentioned here synaptic vesicles okay then you have the part referred here as sarcolemma okay so this is the membrane which encloses the cytoplasm and you know in this cytoplasm we are coming up call that sarcoplasm so here we have sarcolemma this whole boundary line that you can see here is referred as sarcolemma. Then you can see the powerhouse here. So they are called mitochondria that is known to us. But the most important part that you should be knowing that these clip like structures you can see here. So they are just structures like that scattered throughout the sarcolemma and write down their name. So it is called nicotinic nicotinic acetylcholine receptor okay nicotinic n i c o n i c o t i n i c okay t i n i c nicotinic acetyl so this is a new word for you acetyl a c e t y l acetylcholine c h o l i n e C H O L I N E, okay, nicotinic acid choline receptors. So it is the neuromuscular junction, or you can say at which the chemicals are transferred and the action is mediated. So this diagram, please practice it a lot many times with the label stuff to know the things in detail. And that is a part of your complete setup. Now, before we move into the other part of the chapter, these are the two flow charts that you have to learn it by heart before we take up the second topic. Okay. So, in human beings, 
the nervous system as i have told you has two parts cns and pns okay the cns means central nervous system which consists of brain and spinal cord i have just told you in before in this whole same video and second is the pns pns means peripheral peri peripheral nervous system okay peripheral nervous system so this peripheral nervous system is further divided into two parts basically first is somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system somatic is also called voluntary okay voluntary and involuntary also called autonomic nervous system so that is for peripheral nervous system and this autonomic nervous system has got further two parts one is called sympathetic nervous system and other is called parasympathetic nervous system so please learn this name because we will use this names in the coming videos too much okay for sympathetic motor system and parasympathetic motor system so that is as far as animals or humans are concerned now come for the plants because they also have control coordination in them so in that we have two terms one is called tropic movement which is directional movement other is nastic movement so it is movement independent of the growth okay which is non directional it is directional of course and in case of further so these movements are governed the directional movements are governed by lot many stimulus okay so these are some of the stimulus which you should know it so number one is phototropism again the photo is the word used for light so they move according to the light source then is geotropism so as you know geo stand for earth or gravity so movement towards gravity is called geotropism then we have a third term chemotropism okay chemotropism c h e m o chemotropism means movement toward the chemicals okay growth so chemotropism and the last one is hydrotropism hydro as the name states is towards water movement towards water so basically you have in plant these uh, four main types of tropism is movement okay so phototropism geotropism chemotropism and hydrotropism so these two flow chart should be drawn properly in your respective notes copies and make sure that you should label this diagram again completely and as a result when we do the next video these terms should be known to you so go through the whole presentation again and make sure you should know all these things as we are going to use them in next tutorials so again have a nice time take care